It is, Why are you yelling? I don't know. <laughs> Well, the man you're about to meet is a modern-day spiritual guru. You all watched Eat, Pray, Love. Many of us are on our own journey. Well, Radhanath Swami was born Richard Slavin to a Jewish family in Chicago in the 60s, and this is what he became. At age 19, he decided to trek on his own spiritual adventure, hitchhiking all across the world. He landed in India, where he was robbed at knife point, attacked by wild dogs, and even held captive by a snake charmer. He says this was all part of his destiny, and he is here now as the author of a new spiritual book called The Journey Home. Radhana Swami, thank you for being... I don't know that I've ever met a real Swami before, so thank you for being here on Better Connecticut. I'm so grateful to be with you. Thank you. How does a Jewish kid growing up in Chicago become a spiritual guru now recognized and invited to dine with the president in India? Well, I was a teenager in the 1960s, there were many questions. Yeah. It was the civil rights movement, it was the Vietnam War, and I was confused. I saw so much contradiction. In the name of one loving God, I saw so much division and hatred mm -hmm. in the name of God. And in a country like America, which promises us freedom, I saw there was not really equal rights for the African Americans. And ego and greed in so many people's hearts that was causing them to hurt people. I wanted to find answers, so I joined the counterculture and started to demonstrate with the civil rights movement, with the Vietnam, and eventually mm, I found that the counterculture was not really addressing the real issues. And then I heard a statement that if you don't have an ideal you're willing to die for, you have nothing really meaningful to live for. And I wanted to find that ideal. Mm -hmm. And that then I, I heard from Mahatma Gandhi's teachings that we should try to be the change we want to see be in the Be the change world. you see in the world. And even though Mahatma Gandhi lived a very different life than most of us live, I think many of us, his spirit lives on and we know what he said. Uh, in today, where I can just imagine people watching at home and, and, and they're interested in spirituality and they've read Eat, Pray, Love and they've even seen Julia Roberts out there on her quest. Um, you have taken a vow of poverty. You don't own any property. You live a very different life than, say, most Americans do. But do you believe to become enlightened or to reach that level of peace that you actually have to forsake the modern world? No. No. What we have to forsake is greed and arrogance and ego. Mm -hmm. And whether one is a business person or a television person or whether one's a doctor a lawyer or a politician or even a swami yeah. if we try to harmonize our body our mind with our soul mm -hmm. you see really everyone is looking to love and be loved that's the fundamental need of every living being whatever our occupation whatever our status in society and real spirituality is to connect us with our own spiritual essence and to actually experience the love that is within us, the love for God, and the essence of all great spiritual paths is to be an instrument of that love by showing compassion to others. And by just putting some time aside every day to develop good character and spiritual practice, in our tradition we chant God's names, yeah. then we can actually be instruments of that compassion and love in whatever occupation. Well, it's an interesting story uh, how growing up uh, a Jewish kid in Chicago then becomes a Swami. It's called The Journey Home. You're going to be in New York City. You're going to be signing yeah. books. You, there's a whole bunch of events. The information is going to be on our website. I know we don't have enough time to talk about what it's going to take for all of us to become enlightened, but we do thank you for stopping by, and I hope if you're interested, you'll be able to go see you in New York City. I'm so grateful to you. Thank, thank you. you very much. We'll be right back. You're more Better Connecticut. October 7th, 1960.